Yeah? Okay. Yeah, good morning, everybody. It's nice to see you here so early in the morning. And yeah, our panel is on nothingness. And we have three present presentations. First presentation is by Felipe or Felipe Ferrari. <laughs> That's what you have for today. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, he is now currently studying in Japan at the Meidai, the Nagoya University, under the supervision of Miyahara Isamu. Maybe someone of you saw him earlier on this conference and on the round table at the beginning of the conference. And yes. I think we can start then. Okay. Mm -hmm. So good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here at 9.30. You know? um, and yeah, thank you for the kind uh, like presentation. Uh, okay, thank you, thank you. And uh, uh, <clears throat> OK, so we don't have the, the trajectory yet, but I think, it's, I think it's OK. So I will start by saying that, oh, OK. So I think about the place of reality and um, Okay, so um, as most of you may know, you know, um, when Nishida is talking about place, he's talking about the basho, you know, um, which, as Professor Heisig said the other day, is not a, an easy thing to translate, you know. It's easy to translate it by place, but it's not exactly the same thing that the Japanese think when they think of um, basho, when they think of place, because um, if you got just the I, I will write it here, but I don't think you guys would see. So anyway, so if you just get the basho and the, so you have the kanji of ba, it's like field, like it's also used in the, for example, gravity field, like juryoku um, ba, you know, it's like a field in this physical sense. And uh, the other kanji is the tokoro, which is like, we use as place, you know, um, place both um, physical place and both in a, a place in space, in time, you know, so I say, um, Rosa, it has been so long, I didn't see you, so let's say Nagai Tokoro or something like this, you know, so it's a, um, it can use, also be used by, um, as for space. Okay, so, um, okay, so Basho Nishida first presents it on the Hatarakumo no Kara Miru Mono E, from acting to scene, and, uh, okay, this, um, now I, I quote Professor um, Heisig, so the idea, this idea of place, unlike any other, was like a magnet that drew to itself all his, all Nishida's other ideas and increased its um, pull, um, if not its cl clarity of definition to the end of his work. You know, so I, I definitely agree with Professor Heisig when he says that, okay, so Nishida until um, the end of the 20, 1920s, he was dealing with consciousness, he was dealing with reality, he was dealing with the religious quest, but um, I believe that he was looking for some conception, like to bring all his philosophy together, and uh, I believe that the Basho place is that um, conception that Nishida found. So, okay, now I, I quote Nishida. So, um, concerning the acting thing, I understand that the, the acting thing is the acting self, you know, the, the self that acts in the world. You know? So, concerning the acting thing, I understand the objects acting by means of the subjects and concerning place, Basho, I understand consciousness as a transcendental, uh, transcendental subject, you know? So it's not like place is um, a subject per se in, the, in Shida's philosophy. It's most like, um, I don't think it's a good comparison, but if you think in Ber Bergsonian term, terminology, if you think in Bergson, it's more like a milieu, more like a medium, you know, in which um, um, acts and uh, relationships can occur, you know. Ah, nice. So, okay, so um, what does Nishida mean about saying that um, he understands place as a, a transcendent object? Okay. So first, the acting thing is the self that exi exists and experiences things in the world of phenomena. And uh, this place is for Nishida, he's going to say in his last work, it was the logical foundation um, for, for his philosophical system, you know? A philosophical system in which there is no clear ontological distinction between subjects and objects, you know? Everything exists as a single unit. Um, okay, so um, now I quote Nishida in the... Uh, uh, Okay. Uh, well, in Basho, in the Hatarakumo no Karamino Monoe. So, current epistemology distinguishes three things objects, contents, and acts, and uh, deals with the relations between them. 
But I believe, Nishida believes, that in the roots of these distinctions, what is being considered and, uh, is, a sim is simply a pos opposition between the cognitive act, um, continually changing um, in time, and the object that transcends it, um, that transcends time in this case. So, um, however, in, all, uh, in order for objects to relate with one another, to constitute a single system, and to maintain, them, to maintain themselves as they are, um, we ought to consider not only what, re, uh, what maintains the system, but also what establishes the system within itself and where in the system is in place. Uh, okay, in place this oitearu. Um, so, um, uh, Professor Heisig, the other day he told me that he hates this translation, oitearu. Um, I, I, uh, this translation of in place. I can't say I like it either because like he was saying, in place, I can see like a, a piece of meat is in place in my teeth, you know, after eating or something. So instead of in place, you can also think of takes place, you know, where things takes place, where things occur, you know, because in, in Japanese, when you say oitearu, it's not like just in place something, like to put something inside something. It's like, for example, oitearu, it's like this paper is oitearu on the table, you know, so it's in or on or... Um, Something like this. Um, and, um, okay, so um, that's it. So, like he's saying, um, this um, place is what uh, keeps the system together, you know. Um, it's important to notice that um, Nishida wrote the Basho, the Hatarakumo no Karabinumunoe, after he encountered, um, not encountered, but after he like started studying Einstein. So I believe he was deeply influenced. I mean, he, he exchanged some letters with Einstein also. So it seems to me that he was deeply influenced by the conception of Einstein's um, field, or Feld in, in German. Um, and uh, as much as the gravitational fields like bind the world together um, in physics, that's what uh, uh, Nishida is talking about, Basho, you know? Um, of course, things have their individual basho, not the basho of this thing, for example, not the basho of, what is it, a microphone, I think? Not the basho of the microphone, but for example, the basho of microphone-ness, maybe, or the basho of um, uh, blackness or something. Um, and that's when uh, Nishida compares himself to Plato. So Nishida um, is saying that, I shall name this receptacle, this place of the ideas, with the same word was by, used by Plato in um, Timaeus, which is Basho, uh, which is Kora in the case of Timaeus. Um, so Kora is neither a being nor a non-being. It gives a special, a speciality and corporality to the ideas. And uh, Basho, in the same way, it's a medium um, that gives existence to the things in place in it and that allows things to um, relate with each other. So what you have? You have this acting being, this acting thing that Nishida is talking about, which is the acting self, which is the self that's talking with us, with you guys right now, my personal self. And you have the objects, you know, you have like this um, microphone, you have uh, this chair, you have uh, Francesca, you're not an object for me, but... Um, so we have this kind of um, objects in the world, you know, so... And, uh, um, and the relationship between them, you know, um, I believe Professor Heisig, oh, no, who was it? Professor uh, Maraldo yesterday, he was talking about the relationship and the difference between Taiken and Keiken, you know, so the Keiken, it doesn't depend on me, you know, um, so for example, this chair, this table has a, uh, a relationship with this microphone, you know, so in this Keiken, this ex experience that the table and the microphone share doesn't depend on me, on this acting self in the world, you know? So, okay, so um, I'd like to show, well, I'm going to show afterwards, so, but then you have the acting self. So, this is the acting self, okay? <laughs> so, you have the acting self, and then you have, like, the things in the world, and uh, then you have the relationships and correlationships in between them, okay? So, you have this really simple system, you know, of things correlating with each other, but if everything exists in a place, you know, Nishida says, I quote Nishida now, that which is much, much take place in something, uh, in Arumono. So on the contrary, this, uh, if the contrary was real, the distinction between is and is not would not be possible. 
So it means that in order to say that anything is, that anything exists, be it an object, or the contents of the object, or the acts of the object, it must exist in some place, in some basho. And uh, there is a basho for everything. So, okay, if there is a basho for everything, we have the basho of this microphone, the basho of this, it's not a mouse, uh, um, this eraser, I think, and this pen, for example. And we have the relationship between them, for example, clothes and the car and everything. So, if everything has a place, and if the, the relationship between them, between them also exists. So this relationship also must have a place. You know, it's very small here. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, OK, so where is the system in place? You know, the system of things, um, uh, self, and uh, objects. The, where is this, pla this um, system in place? OK, so, so now I go back a little. Uh, Further to the Zenokenkyu, so since the publication of the Zenokenkyu, Nishida has been dealing with the idea that the phenomena are not simply that which um, is presented to us, but that the compound of the phenomena, uh, phenomena of consciousness, um, we have the phenomena of nature and phenomena of consciousness, but since even the, phenom the external phenomena of consciousness, like um, they are intelligible to us, so Nishida identifies them as phenomena of consciousness as well. So. All the phenomena are phenomena of consciousness. So um, uh, the compound of those phenomena, this phenomena of consciousness, is at the same time all the reality that we are able to experience, while this, the self, for example, if my, me, myself, if I am this microphone, so is also part of this very e experienced reality. Um, so um, this, like, like I said, so the self also needs to be part of this experienced reality, okay, of this system, this system of reality. Um, okay, so um, now I quote Nishida in the Zenokenkyu now. Uh, no, um, forgive me, in the Basho. So, um, if the object, the ta uh, Taisho, transcends the act of consciousness, the Ichikisayo, and if the object comes uh, becomes something completely outside of consciousness. Okay, we have this system. If an object like, is turned into something completely outside of this system of consciousness, um, we would, from inside um, the consciousness, we would be unable to think of anything, or at least to think of this thing that is outside of the system of consciousness. Um, and even to represent an, this as an object, um, or, that, or even to say that this object transcends the act of consciousness. Okay? So if this is the case, um, there's nothing that can like, transcend consciousness in this way. But <laughs> um, And even if there was to be, um, there's no, re no way for us to understand it. So for us, it's as much as it didn't, didn't exist at all. Um, okay, so consciousness, this system of consciousness, it is limited by a field of consciousness. There, there's the field again, you know, remember the basho, the ba, that I told before? The field of consciousness, the ishiki no ba. Um, let's think that this table is the ishiki no ba, okay? So um, there are no objects or acts or anything that could exist outside of this um, field of consciousness. Um, okay, so this field of consciousness is the ultimate um, basho, the ultimate place where all the phenomena takes place. You know, um, okay. So now I'm going to read. Um, I'm going to quote myself, maybe. Um, <laughs> okay. So um, consciousness acts as a, for a force field that binds the phenomena together. At the same time, as it gi uh, it gives them the place in which um, they are able to correlate with each other. Um, of course, it's not the personal consciousness of the self, of this self. Um, but rather an immovable field um, in contrast with the ever-changing phenomena that are in place in it and that encompasses all that which can be done. Again, if you think in Bergson, is the media, you know, yeah, um, a medium, an immovable medium where things exist. So, um, okay, so it does not mean that for Nishida there is no individual consciousness, you know, 
um, but rather that my personal consciousness that is understood as, a, as being internal and intrinsic to the self, I, I am this microphone again, so that is intrinsic to the self is also, uh, also takes place uh, inside this much broader consci consciousness um, that encompasses the basho of all these phenomena. And uh, there, there are them levels of consciousness inside the field of consciousness, in the same way as there are different levels of basho, you know? So, um, the basho of the idea, idea is so platonic to say that, but um, the basho of the idea of this eraser um, is inside this much broader basho of uh, this field of consciousness, or something like this. Um, okay, so now I quote Professor Cramo. Um, he's the English language translator for the basho. So he says that um, consciousness can also likewise endlessly reflect upon itself, you know, a consciousness inside a consciousness inside of consciousness, um, taking itself as an object, emplaced within a further consciousness, um, as it deepens and broadens its reflection. Here, I, I have Professor Cromwell's drawing, but no. <laughs> someday I can show you. Um, okay, so what about this self that is inside of consciousness? Um, it's even int strange to say that maybe a, a self inside of consciousness. So um, when saying that an object, uh, that objects are, are take place in consciousness, it may seem that uh, Nishida is arguing that there are no things external to the self, or at least that in a non-dualistic way, um, the body that uh, and the physical world exist simply as projections in, projections inside of our consciousness. You know, it's easy to say that, okay, so um, if every, all the phenomena exist in this field of consciousness, um, so it's like to say, saying that uh, there is no external world or that we can access any external world and uh, um, everything is, exists only in consciousness. Um, but that's not the case. Um, because this consciousness is not the self's particular, uh, particular consciousness, you know? It's not the, the consciousness of myself, you know? Uh, and we are um, able to experience the acting self, this self that acts in the world. Um, so we are able to experience it in the same way that we are able to experience the things, the other things that correlate with it. So um, we cannot say that this consciousness it's this self's consciousness because it is also like takes place inside of consciousness, you know. So, okay. So once again, we have that si this system. Okay. So this acting self um, access the phenomena solely empirically, solely like um, through experience, not pure experience, but like the common day, everyday experience, experience, and. Um, it's basho is also inside the consciousness. This place is also inside of consciousness, and, uh, um, and this is uh, so. In this way, this self is a kind of a reflection again to the one one of you that worked in the Professor Moraldo's uh, yesterday's speech and uh, yesterday's communication. So. It's nothing more than a reflection. This self. Okay, once again, I'm I'm the microphone. So. I'm the microphone, maybe I'm more like a speaker or something, but anyway. So, um, it's a sort of a ma manifestation or a reflection of uh, a tr some kind of true I, you know, some kind of true self, okay? So, okay, so if I'm talking about a true self, another self, not another self, but um, a self that in a way transcends this one that is in the world, so we have to talk about two kinds of selves, okay? Solvers, is that right? Okay. So we have this acting self that takes place inside of consciousness. And uh, being uh, taking place inside of consciousness, they exist in the same realm as all the phenomena. And we have what Nishida is going to call the Miru Monoto Stenojiko, uh, a self as an observer, or as an observing self, a looking self, a watching self. Um, this self takes place in somewhere else, not, of course, inside the system of consciousness. Um, um, and it's never an, an agent inside the f world of phenomena, you know? So it's, I think it's even better than my drawing because you have this acting self in the world and you have this just observing self. Imagine that I cannot do anything here, but I can act in the world through this self and uh, I can also see the world also through this self, but I cannot act the, in the world, you know? It's, um, 
It's a common mistake, and I, I did this mistake many times. It's not saying that uh, for Nishida there are two selves, you know? Um, but th just that we have the true self, and you have this other self in the world as an, an expression of the self that is in place in somewhere else. Okay, so if this place is in, if this self is in place in somewhere else, where is it in place then? So it was a really nice drawing that I made in the PowerPoint, but I was going to make a suspense and everything. But uh, okay, this place is the the um, time loop. It's the absolute nothingness. It's a time loop, you know. And uh, of course, once again, the time loop move to translate to um, nothingness is not that easy, you know. Um, that's the very reason why I went to Japan. Um, I I was studying Japanese philosophy in Brazil, and uh, he, this guy, this Nishida guy, he was talking about the place of nothingness. What's he talking about? And I thought. If I don't go to this island, I can understand what he's talking about, and uh, now I understand even less than I, I, than I used to understand before. Uh, okay, so okay, so we have here the world of objects, the world where things correlate with each other, which, with each other. We have the field of consciousness. Now we have an intrusion in the field of consciousness, but we have this field of consciousness, <laughs> and we have this basho of true, of absolute nothingness. Okay, this basho of the time loop that's here. Okay, so um, Professor Kremel draws a very, very good pyramid here. I can show you guys after. Um, okay, so um, okay. But now I'm thinking, as Professor um, Heisig thinks, that um, he says that if we think in Platonian term, terminology, um, it's like that world is just the shadows that are cast inside the cave's wall. And uh, so the light comes from the, um, the time of the basho, from the place of um, nothingness. OK, so. Um, if the, the light that, in a way, gives reality or gives existence to those shadows that exist in the phenomenal uh, world, um, if the Zetai Minobasho is this light, so it's, this, it's the same as saying that um, the observing self, the Mirumonoto Steno Jipo, it's not uh, like in Plato's cave that the uh, um, okay, so the the guy observing the shadows is like here, and the light is here. Um, is this, is saying that um, the observing self is in the very light um, of um, the time itself, you know, in the very light of absolute nothingness, as I said in my title, my, my title, my title. So. Oh, I had this co a comparison between my pyramid and Professor Kramer's pyramid, but anyway. So, okay, now I'm quoting Professor Heisig. If you want, you can ask him directly. Um, but um, what Nishida is suggesting here turns the image of Plato's cave in its head. You know, so rather than see freedom from illusion, illusion um, as living the half life of self, self optionated um, self enclosed ignorance where the world can only appear as shadows dancing on the wall um, for the bright sunlight of reality. Bright sunlight of reality? Me, really? <laughs> <laughs> the bright sunlight of, rea um, uh, of reality. Uh, where was I? OK. Where things can be known as they are. Nishida wants to find a standpoint, a standpoint, a tachiba in Japanese, uh, a, standpoint, a standpoint in which the knowing subject the no, again, the knowing subject, maybe one of you guys, the knowing subject um, standing four square in the very sunlight of real itself, um, in the real and objective world, can be seen um, as itself an illusion, okay? Like a, a shadow cast in the wall, um, to be broken through only by negating the self, this self and seeing everything moving from around the world as, uh, as shadows of true, of the true um, awakened self. <laughs> awakened self? OK, 1 minute 55 seconds. It's OK. <laughs> Just one more page. Okay. Yes, um, OK, so we have this sunlight of reality and uh, this observing self here and uh, the world of consciousness and uh, 
the acting self that is inside the, this system of um, consciousness. So, okay, I will try to do a, not a conclusion, but a gather everything I said together. Okay, so, so the true I is in the very sunlight of reality. Oh, okay. Um, observing the empirical phenomena experienced by the ref reflected acting self that is unable to even comprehend its lack of freedom uh, and true knowledge, its lack of true knowledge. So um, the phenomena uh, of consciousness is the single reality, as Nishida has defined in the Zen of Kenkyu, can only be known from the standpoint of the sunlight itself, which is for Nishida the standpoint of true nothingness. Um, so the true reality of the phenomena is then in place um, in the consciousness that can only be accessed uh, access through, uh, uh, I'm sorry, by the whole observing self, uh, uh, accessed as a whole by the observing self. So, um, even, once again, even if there were to be phenomena that would be in place, some, that would, be, would take place somewhere else, um, uh, since they would possess no basho, they would have no place to be, they could never be considered um, an existent phenomena and uh, could never be considered as a, being a real, real reality. Um, okay, so we have that Basho acts as the logical cornerstone for this um, Nishida system, in which there is no distinction between subjects and, obje uh, subjects and predicates. And um, once again, um, quote to Professor Heisek, um, the logic of locus. Um, he myself, uh, he told him myself that he doesn't use this expression, uh, logic of locus anymore. He prefers to use using the logic of basho or place maybe. So um, the logic of locus, the logic of place, the logic of topos, the logic of kora in Platonist terms, terminology, uh, we might say is an attempt to explain the process um, of the one standpoint uh, the one standpoint opening to the other, to dislocate the ordinary self from its apparently fixed abode on the landscape of subjects <coughs> and objects and relocate it in its true landscape, which is, as the background of oriental painting, um, is an absolute essence. Um, so this phenomena of consciousness are the only reality that are presented to us. So, um, okay, so just as a final note, uh, so, those phenomena of consciousness, they are the only reality that is presented to us. Um, and uh, so the place of reality, if you are to say, um, is not like there is, Nishida is saying that no, there is no real place or that um, uh, um, there is no, no real place, no, forgive me. Um, there is no real reality or no external thing to the world, to the self or something. That's not it at all. Um, it's just that, so there is this um, field of consciousness, and uh, we have the self that is inside this field of consciousness, the, the expression of the self that is inside this field of consciousness, and another self that is in this true sunlight of reality. You know, it's like lighting up uh, what Plato would sell the shadows inside the cave, you know. Um, Now maybe we just use a couple of minutes for some questions and Francesca had a question right now. Um, no? Okay. Um, then anybody else? Well actually there is no question, I have one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> cool. I was um, asking myself uh, self. Think about <laughs> self. <laughs> um, can we say then uh, that this data have um, some consciousness? Because when we are talking about consciousness, we are not talking about things. It's about human being. And uh, if we are talking about two different kinds of self, it uh, can be a bit uh, messy to, to say the self number one and self number two. Uh, can we... <laughs> Maybe uh, speak about an uh, I and a self then for the basho and have this basho a consciousness? Uh -huh. Yeah, um, I think it's in a way it's not wrong to say that because my drawing is really 
simple now, it's really simplistic now because, okay, so if we had the, this world of um, consciousness here, of consciousness here, in fact, the Basho of the Taimu, uh, the Taimu of Basho, Basho of the Taimu, the Taimu of Basho, um, it would not be like really here, but it would be like here, you know, like encompassing all this consciousness. So it's not like the Basho, the, the Taimu has an active consciousness, but if you say that, uh, as Professor Kramer also says, that if you say that this, the Zetaimu is the basis of consciousness, so in this way you can say, of course, yeah. But not, not a consciousness, um, for example, not, as con not a consciousness Hume is going to say about consciousness, but a conscious, not an active consciousness, but this consciousness as a place, you know, in this way, yeah, I think you can say something like that, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another question? Mm -hmm. yeah, you can. So then Ask me anytime. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just kind of a bit of a vague question, yeah. but you talk about you know the active um, so? active eye as oh. being a um, as an expression mm -hmm. of um, sort of the mm -hmm. greater mm -hmm. sort of mm -hmm. consciousness. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about um, this relationship of expression and mm -hmm. how it is um, how it is possible how it works mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. in in the sense that if you kind of um, ex expression can be used sometimes as a bit of a weasel word yeah. for yeah. this sort of mm -hmm. thing where um, if you're not working with a sort of a robust logic of mm -hmm. expression, then mm -hmm. you kind of mm -hmm. have this case where the field mm -hmm. of consciousness um, ends up in a kind of dualism yeah. and a, yeah. and a problem of sort of epiphenomenalism, mm -hmm. where it's kind of just detached. Yeah. Um, um, it, it seems to me that there's mm -hmm. a solution there by maybe taking it a yeah. phenomenological root of, um, or existential phenomenological mm -hmm. root of expression in terms of like disclosure, yeah. as yeah. you're talking yeah. about with yeah. shining the light on things. But I was wondering if you could just mm -hmm. weave yeah. a bit more of a story about this expression. If, if I can understand it, but <laughs> I can understand your question, definitely. I'm not sure I understand um, she does expression. Um, but it's the, the very same thing that Professor Marado was saying yesterday about the... Because the expression is, is like Hyogen. It's Arawasu and Arawasu. Eh? Uh, oh, Arawareru and Arawareru. So... Oh, nice. So... Um, as far as I understand... Oh, of course I, I, I am mistaken. Definitely mistaken. But as I understand, Ishida is not that strict when he's talking about expression as we would like him to be. You know, In the Zen Q, I believe he's really... Um, Restrict uh, when saying about expression, because when he says that um, the world is an expression of God, he's talking definitely about this, the very same thing you were saying about Judaism, uh, Judaism and the uh, Christian Christ Christianity, like the world is an expression of God, and uh, the world existing as it is itself is an expression of God's personality, of everything else and uh, of all the all the things and. Uh, um, if the world exists like in this like really single system um, <coughs> where nothing's lacking or we cannot observe nothing nothing lacking, um, then this uh, personality of God is like extreme love, you know, is like absolute love or something. So in the Zen of Q, definitely he's much more strict when he says about expression, you know. Um, I believe that. Uh, when saying that um, you have the okay, you have this self and you have this self in an expression of the other self, I believe that the the um, the kanji of Arao of of course is Hyogen, but in this case, I would believe he's putting putting some more emphasis on the um, on the Hyogen, so on the second Hyogen, you know, and the gen of Arawas in the gen of you have the like the I. Um, Kanji, you know, so uh, the miru, yeah, the kanji of miru, you know. So that's what I would believe, you know. But I would also, like you were saying, like that Ishida was much more like strict, uh, especially after the basho uh, about it. But as I understand, this is a different expression than the one he's using in the Zenokenkyu. You know? So I don't think it's a, an answer, but 
If you find the answer first, please feel free. Um, in, in Brazil, we say xará, people with the same names. So please, xará, you can <laughs> tell me that. Okay. Okay. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you.